Hello and welcome along to the Racing Postcast, brought to you by the Racing Post, sponsored by Unibet for one of the biggest previews of the year. Yes, it is the Grand National itself, one of the biggest races in the world. There's going to be millions and millions tuning in to watch the big one at four o'clock on Saturday. You join us for an excellent preview alongside Johnny Pearson, Graham Robway, and from Unibet, Ed Nicholson. Ed, this is a massive weekend for yourself at Unibet. There'll be plenty of offers on show, and it's just a great race. It's, it's got so many special memories for so many people. I bet you're looking forward to it. Yeah, it's my favourite day of the year. I grew up watching the Grand National many years before the rest of the panel, about 1973, 74, Red Rum, Went to the National in 78 when I was nine years old, watched Lucius win that. So, yeah, it's a race I, I, I really love. And it's, um, as the third in adult population place a bet on the Grand National, it is, it is really the race that stops a nation in the UK. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it this year. It, um, it's going to be excellent. Four o'clock as well, a little bit earlier than last yeah. year. So that might have an effect on turnover as well. Absolutely, yeah, really looking forward to it. And before we get into the, the actual previews of the racing on Saturday, I will get a few, just a memory off each of Ed's, Ed's mentioned a few there, but Graham Robway, you must have had some decent Grand National memories. Looking forward to Saturday. I can't wait, yeah. Uh, like, like Ed, you know, um, it was always a big uh, event in my household, big family event. Everyone gathered around the, the television to watch the, the Grand National and, and those famous fences. Was, was, you know, it was one of the best days of the whole year. So I've had so many great Grand Nationals. The Probably the Bobby Joe was probably my favourite one because he, he was the one that I backed, the first winner that I backed in the race. But I was there when Minnie Homer won it and he beat all school just so. And it was very soft ground that day and he was a slow old also just so. So, yeah, I mean, I love it, Sam. I can't wait. I reckon this year I'm going to have the winner as well. You know, I'm due. I haven't had the winner for so long. Like Bobby Joe, how many years ago was that? 1990s or so. I'm due. I think this is going to be it, Sam. This is my year. Yeah, Robbie Wilders has also said it was his year on last week's episode. He said he's never backed the winner of the Grand National, but he thinks this will be his year. And I'll let people know Robbie's selection just a bit. Johnny Pearson, um, I mean, in terms of national memories, mine, mine will only go back so far. But I remember back in Tiger Roll to win the National the first time we did it. That was the first winner I had of the National itself. What about you? I think the closest I've got to winner is uh, the sweep in the sweepstake where I've had the winner there. I'm not sure I've actually backed on. I used to back Alvarado for the Ruckers a couple of times. He was good for a place when he was running. Um, but it's you know it's a tricky race, and we've got obviously the caveat of 34 runners this year, which is everyone's banging on about it. Oh, it should be easier. Still 34 horses. It's not like it's, it's not like it's a small field. So I'm not paying too much. You know, put, put too much on the fact there's less runners. There's still a lot of runners there to pick from. Absolutely, it should be yeah. good. 34 runners, and it's going to be on bottomless conditions. And we'll talk about that in just a second. But let's have a big preview of the race. And first of all, bring up the whole market with Unibet currently for the four o'clock at Aintree on Saturday. It's the Randots Grand National Handicap Chase, four and a quarter miles here. And Unibet's betting at the time of recording is Corak Rambler, last year's winner, is the five to one favourite. Iron Maximus is seven to one. Vanillier is 17 to two. Meeting of the Waters is also 17 to two. Mr. Incredible and Panda Boy, 11 to one. Kitty's Light is 12 to one. Marla Mission, 14 to one. Manella Indo, 16 to one. Limerick Lace, 16 to one. Noble Yates, the 2022 winner, he's 18 to one along with the mud loving Nasalam 18s. Delta work is 22 to one. Late night pass 25s. Galid Lato is also 25 to one. Coco Beach, Capadano, Galvin, Chemical Energy all 33 to one. Statler, adamantly chosen. Glenguli are all 40s. Foxy Jacks, ain't that a shame for David Maxwell? Wouldn't that be a story? Uh, Mac Totti, they're all 50 to one. The Goffer also 50s. Roy Marge is 50s. Janadil, 66 to one. Farouk Delen, 66 to one. El Dorado Allen, Run Wild Fred, Minella Kruner, Shambard, all 66 to 1, and a clap de rear, 80 to 1. God, it's hard going through the whole market, but you've seen that on the screen there with all of Unibet's prices at the time of recording. Um, first of all, let's talk about the favourite. We had a little bit of a brief mention on the show last week of the favourite, but Correct Rambler, 11, uh, around 5 to 1 currently, but I'm just looking at this horse thinking, is he a good favourite? Ed Nicholson, as we were off air, we were discussing a special market of Unibet of who will go off favourite. And I believe it is Corrick Rambler. It is, but not as short a price certainty as, as maybe everyone was thinking a couple of weeks ago. 
Um, Court Rambler is two to one to go off favourite with Unibet. It's a special market that we have. We have a, quite a few uh, on the race that I'm sure we'll talk about. Um, Meeting of the Waters has been the money move in the last four or five days. JP McManus has bought this horse in March. Um, interesting jockey bookings, which I'm sure we'll talk about, is now um, second or third favourite, around about eight, nine to one. He's at 11 to four to go off favourite. And I am Maximus, the horse that got away from Nicky Henderson. He's never won the Grand, uh, the Grand National and he had them as a, as a novice, um, but now he's with Willie Mullins. Um, he's 11 to four to go off favourite as well. So not a cold certainty, cold stone certainty to be favourite this current round, but which you wouldn't have thought of seven days ago. Absolutely, yeah. Graham Robway, Cork Rambler for yourself. I mean, do you think he will probably just go off favourite on the basis of the fact that he won it last year? Have you got a few concerns about him? Uh, I, yeah, I think from a form per perspective, is he only all she can have as favourite? He's head and shoulders um, above these on if he runs to, to his last time out third in the, in the Gold Cup, isn't he? I mean, that was an RPR of 169 that he got that day. That's £10 more uh, than his mark of uh, 159. So our handicappers think he's well in. Um, and, of course, we know he goes around the course and distance because he did it last year. So from a form perspective, he's absolutely bomb-proof. But, of course, this is a Grand National. Uh, most of the people betting on it are, are not going to be form Ellings and Paul Town in because they were on him at Cheltenham and he had, they did so well. And I could see I am Maximus challenging uh, Correct Rambler for favourite because um, Correct Rambler has been so short for so long that he's a kind of horse that, that almost has to drift mm. because I think that the bookmaker because they're probably already defensively priced him. So I could see him drifting out and, and, and offering some good value on the morning. You may even get sort of seven, maybe eight to one, I reckon, on Correct Rambler on, on Saturday morning. So um, I don't know who's going to go a favourite. He might well come back in and go a favourite at the end, but I, I definitely think you'll get bigger odds about Correct Rambler than you're getting on Thursday, that's for sure, on Saturday morning. OK, interesting. Um, Johnny Pearson, thoughts on Correct Rambler's chances? It'll be interesting to hear because... Uh, Look, I can understand why everyone is, is there going, look, he's, he's probably the most likely winner um, going back to back here. We know he can do it. The soft ground, well, the heavy ground is going to be a bit of a worry, though. I mean, I can, you know, I can see him why he's favourite. I can see him running well, but I really can't see him winning the race. I think that Gold Cup run, it, it was obviously a very, very good run, but I can't help but feel that's probably taken quite a lot out of him. And when you've got the likes of Iron Maximus, he keeps improving. Okay, his jumping's been a bit questionable at the time, but he's been winning big races. You know, he's not run since late Feb. He's had that much longer off. And I think he's a much... I mean, I would put him in as, as favourite over, over Corrick Rambler. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, Corrick Rambler, yeah, very good. Won it last year. Still improving. But I think that race at Cheltenham has probably taken more out of him than, than is ideal. Yeah, what what your thoughts Ed, on that and on the the Gold Cup run? It did look legless at the finish. It, it's a it, look. There's enough weeks to turn things round, but to have a tough race, it, you know, last year it was the the ultimate prior to this, but this time it's a Gold Cup. We're talking about you know on the greatest steeplechase is going. Like realistically, it, it, is that going to affect him to the level where he's probably going to be a you know struggling a race like this? Well, history tells you that if you run well in a Gold Cup, it does take its toll. I go yeah. remember Master Oates, who won the who won the Gold Cup and was a handicapper at the beginning of the season. So when the weights came out, he still actually had a good weight and he, he got beat, even though Norm Williamson went round the outside, maybe you were, I think a fourth. Um, and Garrison Savannah, who won the race, then got beaten by Seagram in the uh, in the Grand National. So traditionally. You know, horses that run well in the Gold Cup who have a hard race, they do feel it because there are only a few weeks in between the two. And the going won't help either. The heavy going will certainly put um, emphasis on stamina and and um, the ability to get through races. Um, in terms of favourite, I mean, people forget he was favourite last year. He went off 8-1 to favourite. Um, and I think I, I agree with Graham. Um, and we mentioned it last week. I, I said exactly the same as Graham. I thought he'd go out and he might come in again. Um, mm -hmm. And I can see him being about eight. Whether he'll get down to the lowest SP favourite we've seen for a long time. I, I mean, I think he will be favourite. Um, but I mean, his title role was four to one. Um, Postaline back in 1919. I'm going to bring one up then. <laughs> he was the shortest prize favourite, 11 to four, with uh, Lester Pickett's granddad on board at Gatwick. Um, so, you know, those are the really short. They're really <laughs> short favourites. But this this race, I think I think he'll go off five to one, six to one. I really do. I think he'll be favourite. 
Oh, you weren't please. around then. You weren't around then, Ed, surely. <laughs> I know you've seen a <laughs> Only lot of just. <laughs> Only just. I look, I look a little bit younger than I am. Horses, <laughs> horses flying home at Gatwick. Um, yeah, something I definitely didn't experience there. Um, Ed, before we go through and get selections from, from the whole panel here, let's just go through some of the extra places, the offers for the race, any extra markets you want to mention. What have we got? Yeah, well, we've got two extra places on the race, so that's obviously first six now. Um, and that's interesting because the midpoint for number of finishes is only around 14. Um, we'll have betting on that nearer the day as well. We we are recording this on a Thursday. We just need to see what the ground's going to be like. Obviously, the ground does have ramifications with with finishing betting. Only two horses jump round in 2001, um, although four did finish, but two got remounted. And, you know, going back to the just slow days that Graham was talking about, um, you know, the going definitely affects the number of runners that finish. So we'll have to have a look at that. But at the moment it's midpoint 14. We'll have offers on that. Um, we'll have winning distances. At the minute, the, the midpoint seems to be about six lengths. Obviously, that extenuates with the going if it gets more extreme. Um, 11 or 12 year old to win. Not many. We have, we've got to go back to 2014 for the last double digit winner of this race in terms of age. Uh, Pinal de Rey. Um, so we've got six horses that are 11 or 12. We go nine to two that. They don't tend to win this race these days. Um, and also the old favourite, who will win, UK or Ireland? Um, Ireland are very strong favourites at two to nine. So uh, I think we've only got eight riders and we are something like that. When I say we, the UK. So there are plenty of other specials, but the main the main event will be the race itself with the two extra places. And who knows? It might be, I mean, I think it'll be five to one the field, but it might be a little bit bigger. Mm, we'll just wait and see on the day. Well, let's get some selections to the race. I will get the panels one, two, three during the first part of the show. But Graham Robway, Robbie Wilders last week, he came on the show and he said, I'm going to have my first Grand National winner. And he's confident that I am Maximus will be the one that goes and does the business. Will Robbie Wilders be having his first Grand National winner? Not for me, Sam. Um, <laughs> I know that, that that he's obviously very popular, and he, he did stay on really really well, didn't he, when he won uh, last season's Irish Grand National. So I could definitely see him improving for a, for the for the stiffer test. But of the t- of those at the top of the market, I'd much rather back Correct Rambler. I, I just think he's got much better form, and there's not going to be a lot between them in in the market. However, he's short enough as well, and I can't I can't bring myself to back Correct Rambler at what. Six, even seven, maybe even if he got to eight. Um, Noble Yates is a big old price, is he not, Sam? I mean, this is also who stays forever. That's all he does is stay. The, the more of a test this mm. becomes, the, the more it's going to suit um, Noble Yates, I think. And the ground's going to be heavy by all accounts. Um, yeah, he ran a cracker in the race last year. He won it the, the year before, didn't he? Uh, he won he won the Stayers or the Cleaver at Cheltenham, uh, coming home very, very strongly. So, uh, yeah, my number one pick uh, uh, double digit odds uh, you know, each way uh, with all the extra places i can't see how noble yates doesn't get in the first six he's sure to run well so noble yates is my number one here sam number one for graham robway 18 to 1 with uni bet and harry cobden taking the ride wouldn't that really top off a great season for harry cobden um winning the grand national itself johnny pearson number one selection for yourself who will it be in the race number one selection you know it's a short enough price but it's i am maximus so it's I think he's had a better prep than Corrick Gramber is, you know, in the distance between races. He's going to stay. We saw that when he won the Irish National last year. And I just, I see him as a, you know, as a really, has a really, really strong chance. And I'd be surprised if he wasn't, I think he'll win. I'd be surprised if he wasn't in the first three, but I'd be very surprised at that point. Absolutely. I mean, I am Maxwell, you look at it, and it's, in testing conditions, beating Vanilla as easy as you like. This horse is going to love mm. conditions. We know this horse stays. Paul Townend on board. Willie Mullins. J.P. McManus. It's just got everything written all over it to potentially go a favourite here. Ed Nicholson. I, I don't know if Ryan Maximus is in your top three, but what did you make of his chances and, and who will be your number one selection? Yeah, Ian Maximus sneaks into fourth place in my, oh, right. in my, in my placings. Um, but obviously, he's got a great chance. He stays all day. I mean, everything that the panel said, that I agree. I think he's got a decent chance. Um, my number one position, though, has gone to another horse uh, jockey carrying the same colours. Uh, meeting of the Waters. Um, I'm a bit slow to take to this horse, so I, I haven't got any of the fancy prices. But I just had a look at his form. and it, He's a bit small, which is a bit of a worry. And he pulled early in the Ultima, which is another worry because the big open spaces, the first few fences down that back straight isn't going to be ideal um, or might not be ideal. But I think he's got... 
it's got a good profile for the race. A horse that's, uh, you know, relatively inexperienced on fences, that, which tends to be the way now. It used to be they came back year after year, but those horses tend to only get placed now. They don't, they don't tend to win. Um, Meeting of the Waters has only had six runs, I think, um, over fences. Uh, Travelled much the best in the Ultima, in my, my mind. Um, and even this day on, which you don't, when a horse, it didn't pull monstrously, but he did pull early on and he stayed on at the end of the race. Um, Danny Mullins keeps the ride. He won with him at Leperstown in Ireland. And I noted on the excellent Racing Post site the quotes from Danny Mullins saying he didn't actually know how much he had left, but he just stayed on and all he does is stay. Well, if he all he does is stay, this four mile, two and a half on heavy going, ground conditions that he's won on, um, suggest to me that it, it could be a horse that, that travels well, um, hunts them around, and then just picks up the pieces at the end and just stays on. So, yeah, meeting of the waters, I, I think, has got genuine chance. And, you know, recently bought by JP, who's done it a few years. He buys a horse a month or two before the national, he pinpoints them for the race, and they get placed. Not always win, but... So I, I, I think down the bottom of the handicap, which I think is going to be significant as well with the heavy going, he's only got to carry 10 stone eight. Um, he is going to have to put in a career best performance of a rating of 147, but he's, he's improving as he goes up in trip. So... I think there's a lot of positives for him. I'll be surprised if he's out the first four and with us as the first six with the, with the unit bet. So he'd be my number one selection. There we go. Okay, so two votes for Ryan Maximus, one vote for Meeting the Waters and one vote for Noble Yates as the number one fancies from the panel this week. Right, let's go into the second and thirds. So I'll get both at the same time here. Who's going to be finishing second? Who's going to be finishing third? Johnny Pearson, to you first on this. I think finishing second will be Noble Yates. I mean, we spoke about how running in the Gold Cup can hinder your chances and with what we're going to have with Kyrie Grambler this year. Noble Yates did that last year, for, if I've not gone mm-hmm. completely mad. And I think, you know, he stayed on well, but I think the Gold Cup run probably did take a little bit out of him. I think the stay as hurdle option this year is, was going to be a nicer prep for him than it would have been had he run the Gold Cup. Like I seem really benefiting from that. And, you know, staying all day, I think Harry Codden will get a good good ride out, ride out of him and he should and I think he'd fin- finish second and then third I've gone with Coco Beach for Gordon Elliott he won at um, Navan back in November beating Limerick Lace by a little over two lengths and Limerick Race, Lace obviously well fancied this race with Mark Walsh taking the ride there but there's only two pounds difference between Limerick Lace and Coco Beach on that on that run back at Navan I think forty to one's massively over overvaluing, overpricing out there and uh, him there, and I think he should have a really good chance of going closer. Okay, Noble Yates making Johnny Pearson's top two, and also Coco Beach at a big price as well into the frame. I'll give a quick mention to mine. I think Delta Work is an interesting one at around twenty five to one with Unibet currently. I just think this horse, I love horses that run in the cross country. Absolutely love them. Horses especially that can win on heavy ground in a cross country. We know what Tiger Roll's gone and done, but Delta Work is sure to love these fences, and he's also sure to get this trip. I think he's a great bet in these heavy conditions. And the other one that's got to get a mention is the the one that's going to get his ground, which is Nassalam who won the Welsh uh, Welsh Grand National in an absolute bog. I know it was a bit of a mess of a race in behind. This horse won by God half the track, but maybe a bit unfairly treated by the handicap, and Gary Moore had his say on that. But this horse will love these conditions. Kaylin Quinn gets back aboard this horse, which is a massive help for him. I do think Noel Houlihan's a good jockey, but I think Kaylin just gets a lot out of this horse, knows this horse so well, has won so many races on this horse, and I've got a feeling Nassalam will be there at the finish, just plodding away, staying on. So, yeah, Delta Work and Nassalam make my top three. Ed Nicholson, second and third for you. Uh, Vanilla, second, uh, to fill the same spot as he did 12 months ago. Just yeah. watched that race before coming on. And he just, I mean, I remember he was a hurdler and all he did was stay. And he won at the Shelton Festival, didn't he, the Albert Bartlett, and he just stayed at a big price, if I seem to remember, on heavy ground or softest ground, at least. Uh, and he's, he ran that sort of race in the Grand National. You know, when you actually see where he was and how far he finished behind Kurt Rambler, albeit the Kurt Rambler probably was idling in front, um, I just thought he's, re- he's rated around about the same. I think he's three or four pounds higher. He's obviously not been at the races this year. Um, he's been 20s and 50s twice. Uh, and then last time out, Iron Maximus was miles too good for him. But the heavier ground, the extra distance... The fact that we know he jumps round, I, I just thought he was a classic sort of horse that would fill a place, might not have the speed to win. So I put him in a second. Um, then I've gone for Corrett Rambler. Again, you know, he's got the course form. He's got the 
we all, you know, we have we've said everything about him. I think I think it's difficult to get out of the frame. Um, so he's he's down in 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 third, and then just for what it's worth, I am Maximus in in fourth. I love Kitty's light to do well. But yeah, just, wouldn't wouldn't it be Browns, some story? It really would I be. Some story. Just, I looked at. I mean, she, she, he has one on. It's good to see. He's won the two big races in the you know, that or the three last year on good to soft, but. The heavy ground for Nathaniel, I just, I don't know whether he'll like it, but best of luck to Richard Bedford and the all-star yeah. sports racing and Christian Williams, who is a bit of a national specialist. He's won the Scottish national, the Welsh national, the Midlands national, even the virtual national with, <laughs> with Potter's corner. So it'd be great if he could win the grand national. Himself as a jockey came second, didn't he, on Royal Leclerc to Hedgehunter. So he's got a national pedigree, um, and I'm at Chepstow on Saturday, so I'm, if he does win, I'm staying in Wales for the party. Uh, absolutely, yeah. You mentioned that last week. Yeah, definitely be there for that party. Well, I actually forgot about the virtual national. I actually remember a really good video a couple of years back where Charlie Deutsch is watching it, where Ace OK came yeah. down when we were in charge. It's a fantastic video. Um, it's probably around there somewhere. You can probably go find that on Twitter. But I remember Ace and Charlie Deutsch watching it, thinking he had a chance, then came down. It, it yeah. really it got me, that did. Um, Gray and Rob, I mean, Kitty's like be some story. Maybe not in your top three, but who's second and third on the list for you? Yeah, I love Kitty's light, but uh, yeah, you, you probably the ground has probably gone yeah. against him, hasn't it? Yeah, that, I'm sure Connection w- would have wanted a nice dry uh, run to this race, and they haven't had it. So, yeah, um, Limerick later, I think, will run really well, Sam. I know that uh, Johnny Pearson can't have him because we had a little discussion earlier in the week, but can't have her, sorry. She won the Mayor's Chase, didn't she, at uh, Cheltenham? Mm-hmm. I just think she's improving Limerick Lace. I mean, she was second in the... Um, Troy Town was it to to Coco Beach? Mm-hmm. That was over three miles. She's unexposed at the trip. She's gone back down in trip and looked good. But I, I think she she'll stay. And if she stays, she's got a good chance. She likes soft ground. And um, Gavin Cromwell has been winning these uh, staying handicap chases in Britain this season for fun, hasn't he? So um, I, I could definitely see uh, Limerick uh, Lace running really well. Uh, for others to throw in uh, at uh, massive old prices. I mean, Galia De La Toe really likes testing ground. Mm-hmm. Dan Skelton will have a absolutely bang right for this. I mean, we saw how good he was at uh, Cheltenham at getting them right for the big handicaps and... Um, Everything's come right for her, so I could definitely see uh, Galia De Lito running really well. Um, and the other two I throw in that could run into the first six, seeing as Ed's given us six places, adamantly chosen, and um, I think Glenn Gooley. I think they finished first and second in a race at uh, Down Royal. I think it was last time. Yeah. Now, uh, sorry, R- Roy Marg was the one. Not um, what did I say. Glenn Gooley, Roy Mar, sorry, Roy Margan are adamantly chosen. Well, they finished first and second mm-hmm. in a race at Down Royal last time. That that time's really good according to top speed figures. One one thirty three for for um, for the winner. Um, I can see um, both of those running well. Willie Mullins obviously trains uh, adamantly chosen. There's been a bit of money for Roy Marg. Um, Patrick Griffin trains that one, and uh, he's bringing James Reevely over mm. from France to ride it. So that's quite interesting. So. Uh, I don't know how many I've given you there, Sam. About what six, seven, <laughs> but uh, but good, good, good old, um, good old Ed's giving us six places. So uh, you know, there's a, I, I mean, I like, like I said to you, I, I love sitting in front of the TV, and I often I like have five or six or seven going, and you know, you can almost like each one goes. You can, oh, that one's pulled up, that one's gone, you know, but. Uh, I, I just want to have one near the line, you know, one near the finish, uh, up that running. As they come to the elbow, I want something to cheer. So I'm more than happy to have five or six or seven bets, Sam. I just want a winner. Great, Rob has given us the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'll tell you what, G-Rod, if you land that, then I'll give you the money myself. Um, <laughs> that'd be something special, but it's all clear. Just quickly then, I'll just quickly run through the one, two, threes, just with the horses' names, so we've all got them. So I'm going to go, I am Maximus, Delta Work, and Naslam, Ed Nicholson. Meeting of the Waters, uh, Vanillier and uh, Correct Rambler. Johnny Pearson. I am Maximus, Noble Yates and Coco Beach. And I'll give a quick word for the goffer as well. I'm going to follow over a cliff yet again. Okay. And Graham Robway, the one, two, three. Uh, yeah, I think I gave you Noble Yates, Limerick Lace, and I gave um, Roy Marg and uh, Adamantly Chosen, didn't I? Okay. So, yeah, there's the one, two, three, four. That's the one, two, three, four. Yeah. So, that's and uh, I, I think I might have mentioned Glenn Gooley as well. So, you know, maybe that Freudian slip, maybe he's going to run. I'll have to back him now. 
There you go. So there, there, there's your, your one, two, threes, and there's a one, two, three, four from Graham Robway there. Um, they were just a, a, just a quickly a, a minute or so. Is there any others at a big price? I mean, Johnny's just mentioned the Goffers one that he likes. I mean, with Unibet currently at fifty to one, you've got David Max on eight, Nat Shame, Foxy Jacks, Mac Totti, Roy Mars, Jana Dill sixty six, Fruit Dana, Eldorado Allen, Run Wild Fred, Manella Kruna, Shambard, and the Is there any that anyone likes at a massive price? We know a lot of the the general public will be liking them at a big price. Is there anyone that you, you wouldn't put them off? I, I could definitely see the Goffer going well, so I can see why um why Johnny's put that up. I mean that's got a really good handicap form, hasn't it? Um, Janadil's running, isn't he? I mean, that's mm. an interesting one. I mean, he's hundred to one Janadil, but I know I know that they always say these horses don't stay. But he's got a lot of class, doesn't he, Janadil? I mean, if his class could get him into contention, and he does happen to get home, he's no hundred to one shot. So that'd be my, you know, my complete uh, throw out rags that have got a, a great chance. But if one of those goes in, Sam, we'll be off to Spain next week, won't we? Absolutely. Is there any from you, Ed Nicholson, that you, you wanted to give a last mention to before we get into the rest of the racing? Well, I was with you in the asylum, but I just think his handicap rating is too high now. One six one is probably, you know, Danny's winning in the handicaps. And I was disappointed at Cheltenham. So yeah, I can't even I mean I was gonna go in the asylum. I backed him in the gold cup ridiculously. Um, but I was disappointed by that. Um so yeah, in asylum maybe if he came back to form, but his handicap rating is too high. You have to go back years for horses to carry that kind of weight. Even we spoke about uh, Noble Yates. Red Rum was the last horse to carry twelve stone and it it'd have to be somewhere near him to win. You know, Levenstone 12 and Levenstone, whatever he is, nine. They're going to have to be good horses to carry that weight in heavy ground. Yeah, absolutely. Look, four o'clock on Saturday, the big one, the Grand National. Good luck with any bets you're having. As always, do gamble safely. We're going to be back shortly after this brand new Smart View advert. The Smart View um, has come onto the Racing Post app. It's an excellent feature, an excellent race card. Certainly worth looking at. And here's an advert on how it works. Fancy a bet, but find it confusing? Do not fear. SmartView is here to help you. We've taken the traditional race card and removed all the jargon and abbreviations which can be daunting for newcomers. The result is a race card that means making informed choices and picking winners is easier than ever. Our racing experts and data scientists have created an algorithm that puts everything a seasoned punter would consider into the attribute bars you see on the race card and assesses each runner with an overall score out of 100. Welcome back to the second part of the Racing Postcast, brought to you by the Racing Post, sponsored by Unibet. You've got Sam Hart, Ed Nicholson, Johnny Pearson, Graham Rodway taking you through the action on Grand National Day. What a great preview of the Grand National that was. And as you can see from that Smart View advert, an excellent feature to the Racing Post app. If you do want to change your race card to Smart View feature, it'll be interesting to see who they put up for the Grand National itself on Saturday. You better see that on the Racing Post app at 9 p.m. Friday evening. Right, into the rest of Saturday's racing, because it is a great card at entry bar the National. We start off with the 120 on ITV, which is a handicap hurdle just over three miles, a Class 1 event where West Balboa tops the market at 5-1. Cuthbert Dibble is 6-1. Gwenny May Boy is 15-2. Johnny Who is 8-1. Mon Morale, 9-1. I'm looking at double figures about the rest of the field. Johnny Pearson, who wins this? I, I, ideally, I'd see how Nicky Anderson's runners go for the first for, for Thursday and Friday. But I've, I've fallen on Bold Endeavour. Obviously, his horses weren't in particularly good form at Cheltenham, as was pretty well advertised everywhere you, you looked if you're you know, looking at horse racing in any shape or form. And um, they actually ran quite well to finish fourth behind Mon Morale, uh, Mon Morale, is that what you say? Mm, that's it. And I think that's a really good, solid piece of form. He's only gone up one pound in the weights for it. And I think he he should run very well in 20 to 1. Or what, is he 20 to 1? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, around know. that, yeah, 18, 20 to 1. Um, looks far too big a price. Um, the other one is also Nicky Anderson, also a, a much bigger price, is Russian Ruler. He actually travelled pretty well at Cheltenham before being pulled up, and I think he can, you know, you can forgive him a little bit for that run, and he, sh- he should run a decent race, I think, at a big price. Absolutely. Um, Ed Nicholson, you've been down at Nicky's yard in the, the last week or so, and you've probably got a bit of information on these runners as much as the rest of the runners that Nicky has over the week, but what, what has he said about these handicappers? He hasn't, well, not specifically much to me about these horses, or us, I should say, about these horses, but they're all, they've all done their work, they've all done their schooling last week and this week, they've all been kept on the go since Cheltenham, but not in a, not in a, in an extra work environment, just keep them ticking over. 
And he said, we've got a blog at the moment that we went to Nicky's on Monday. So if you do want to know more about his children, about his entry runners, then do have a look at our Unibet blog where we've got a 25 minute um, entry stable tour with, with Nicky. Um, but he says he just, he just doesn't know. I mean, we're recording this before racing on Thursday. Mm. Um, he doesn't know. They're all going well. The blood's all OK. Um, it just be once they get to the business end of the race, will they will they find or will they fold? And at Cheltenham, they, they folded like a like a pack of cards. Um, so it will just be interesting to see how they go. Um, but you're right. I, I, I think John is right with the, regarding the form of Bold Endeavour. Obviously, that was a good performance, especially some horses ran well, some horses didn't. I mean, Lucia ran really well in the Unibet Champion early, but others mm. bombed out. Um, but Bold Endeavour definitely got chances. And I like that piece of form, but I'm going to go with the other horses that finished ahead. I mean, I, I think it will be won by Mon Morel again, mm. or, Cuthbert, or Cuthbert Dibble. Um, this, I should I should say to people that this is the uh, money back second third offer our flagship right. offer. So if you fancy a bet in this race, if you come second or third, you'll get your money back, and it's an extra place. There are plenty of horses in this race, so you'll need that extra place. Uh, but Mon Morel, last I think it's three years at this meeting, he's been contesting Grade One races. Um, he's only had a few handicap races. He started off chasing, so he hasn't had that much time over the smaller obstacles and handicaps. Um, and that was a good performance. I think he's only been put up six pounds for that victory. The uh, Potemps was uh, six seconds quicker than the Stayers the same day. Um, and he stayed on. And I'm led to believe when I look at the times that people think entry is a sharp course, but they actually, it, the times are actually longer for staying races than they are at Cheltenham. Um, so this all stays, we know. If you look where he came from in the Potemps, he had to squeeze through and ran on really well. So I think this distance on soft ground at a track that probably will suit. We know he's run there three times before. I think he's won there as well, this meeting. Um, I just thought he'd, he'd keep on improving. And Paul Nichols is so good with these sort of horses, isn't he? He targets. I mean, it was surprising to see him run at Cheltenham, to be honest. You would have thought that he would have gone straight here, given that he does that with many of his horses. But I just think he's still potentially OK handicapped. So if you fancy him, you've got to fancy Cuthbert Dibble as well, who's £5 better off for three and a half lengths. Um, they're at the top end of the market, but you know, I, Monreal's a bigger price than Cuthbert Dibble, so I'd, I'd go for Monreal. But I think that is the key piece of form that attempts, um, and I wouldn't be surprised Bold Endeavour came there as well. But yeah, it'll be Monreal for me. Monreal, Fred Nicholson, then, but mentions again for Cuthbert Dibble and Bold Endeavour. There's a big price near for Nick Henson, Nico de Boinville, Graham Rodway, uh, West Balboa at the top of the market currently. Obviously, Dan Skelton chasing that train aside to the Grand National would be massive if, if he were to go and win it with Gallia de Lato. But West Balboa, I think, might have been laid out for a, a race like this. Um, probably not a bad favourite in here, but you're going to be taking her on. Yeah, West Balboa won the race last year, didn't she, yeah. Sam? Uh, she's six pounds higher this year. Obviously, went off favourite for the um, long walk um, uh, in 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 the winter. Um, mm. Been a bit disappointed in the last couple of starts, but I suppose you could argue she is steadily coming back to form. I I, I got a sneaky one here. I reckon this could be um, another JP McManus uh, special. Johnny Who for uh, John Joe O'Neill and John Joe O'Neill Jr. Um, this horse has been a, a talking horse all season, really. Um, but he has got some really good form in the book. Uh, early in the season at Cheltenham, he finished fourth in a race which was won by Captain Teague. Um, Lookaway was second, and, and the third was the jukebox man, who, who obviously almost won the Albert Bartlett himself. Johnny, who was eighth behind the jukebox man last time out in the Albert Bartlett, but he, he was far too keen. He had no chance of getting home that day. I just wonder if now that he's had one run over three miles, he might settle down a little bit here. This will be a, a, a big, big field handicap, 22 runners. They'll go a good, solid pace, you would have thought, and he, he might settle better. And if he does, he's got the potential to be a good bit better than a mark of 136. So Johnny Who for me, Sam. Okay, Johnny Who at 8-1 for Graham Robway. Then we move on to the first grade one we cover, which is the Turner's Mersey Novices Hurdle. Over two and a half miles at 155 on the card on Saturday. Where the well-regarded but beaten at Cheltenham, brighter days ahead is 15-8 to eight favourite. Caldwell Potter is 85-40. to 40. This horse that costs probably the same price as the pound as Graham Robway's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 in the Grand National. Uh, Jimmy Sassoy is 5-1. to one. Il Atlantique is 6-1. to one. Staffordshire not... Mahon's way, Esperit de Potier, they're all bigger prices in here. So it all revolves around the top of the market by the looks of things. And Graham Robway, Colwell Potter, this expensive purchase. Paul Nichols now has the horse. Is this a play or is it a lay? I think it's a lay, Sam. Um, 
Oh, yeah, I mean, they've spent an awful lot of money on it, haven't they? Yeah. Is it Geb Mason and Alex Ferguson and John Howes? Uh, I, I, I hope, because they're a great group, I hope that, that um, they do end up having some great days out of Caldwell Potter, but I'm not sure if, if this will be one of them. Um, uh, he was impressive, wasn't he, when he won at Leopardstown? He goes for every ground, but he's going to be short enough. And, and obviously, taking on horses that are coming out of Cheltenham here, one of which was Bright Days Ahead. Of course, he was, he was one of the talking horses the whole week, only to really disappoint, I thought, to be beaten by Golden Ace in, in the mare's hurdle. Having said that, I don't think she was at her best that day. Um, I think I think she was probably below below the form she'd shown when she was impressive on her previous start at Navan. Um I can see her bouncing back, but again, she's she's a short price. So, so the, the, you know, it's not often in these races, uh, novice hurdles like this, where you come in and you've got Gordon Elliott and Paul Nichols at the top of the market, and then Willie Mullins' is horses um, trading at what around four and and seven to one. Jimmy Desoy and um, and Neil Atlantique. I mean. Uh, Mullins has just got all the best novice hurdlers, hasn't he, in Britain and Ireland? So whenever I see his horses running in these type of races, I'm always interested, and especially when they're not favourite. They finished second and third, didn't they, behind um, uh, Ballyburn last time? But mm-hmm. Ballyburn's an absolute aeroplane, isn't he? So I don't think you you you'll be reading too much into the fact that they were so soundly beaten by him. It just depends on which one you think's gonna. Whether you think Jimmy Dussault is going to confirm the form or whether you think he'll can reverse reverse it. I mean, Paul Townend thinks that um, Jimmy Dussault will, uh, will, will, will confirm the form because he rides uh, Jimmy Dussault. So that's good enough for me, but it wouldn't surprise me if he were to take run a huge race as well, Sam. But I'll be, I must admit, I'll be all over the Willie Mullins runners in this race, especially with uh, Bright Days Ahead and Caldwell Potter making the market for them. Okay, yeah. Johnny Pearson, you actually agree with, with Graham Robert here. Jimmy Dussault is the one in here. Yeah, I think that that run in behind Bally Burn, you know, for all he's beaten 13 lengths, I still think that's the best piece of form on offer in this race, which tells you a lot about Bally Burn as much as anything else. But, you know, brighter days ahead, I agree, was disappointing, you know, seemingly the best thing since sliced bread turning up at Cheltenham. And, you know, it just didn't run as as well as everyone thought. And I was disappointed with it. And I wouldn't be having her here against, you know, against the boys here as well could make it a bit more difficult. In Caldwell Potter, you know he's been impressive, but the, it, I, I can't, I can't be confident. You don't know what horse is going to turn up, and he's, he's still got a bit to prove over the, what we saw at Cheltenham, I think. So yeah, yeah Jimmy the Soy for me here. Yeah. The horses out of that sale haven't actually ran that well. I've been looking through; they haven't no, actually turned great up. Great business, <laughs> great, unbelievable um, business. Ed Nicholson, uh, Johnny mentioned there, but bright days ahead. Obviously, Gordon Elliott raving on about this horse prior to the Cheltenham Festival itself. We know how much. He regards her, and I believe you need better have seen plenty of money for this horse. Yes, and I'm not surprised. I disagree with Graham and Jonathan. I think there were reasons why Bright as Days Ahead didn't win. Um, I think the pace of the race was very slow, over two miles one. And to me, she looks like Stayer, or, or more of a Stayer than a, than, a, than, a, than a short horse. So I don't think that early pace would have suited her. Um, and I think that she's, she's better than that, as Graham said. I think she definitely didn't run to the form that they thought she could have run. Golden Ace, you wouldn't have thought, would cause a problem to her with the, with the kind of form that she'd shown. Um, so I, I'd give her the benefit of the doubt. And also she gets a handy seven pounds, which I think is, I mean, we always talk about the seven pounds in grade ones, such as the Unibet Champion Hurdle. You look at Epiton, you look at Honeysuckle, you know, you look at all those horses, how much that makes a difference. And I've just got a feeling that seven pounds with a horse that is decent, has run well on heavy. In fact, one on heavy going. And I think there were excuses last time. I really do. Um, on a slowly run race over a shorter distance, this is two and a half. I think it's much more like what she needs. Um, and I, I actually think, she, I, I think that's why she's been backed. And I, 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 I make her a good bet. I agree with Calder Potter could be anything. I mean, 740,000 euros, you'd like it to be something. But she could be nothing. Or he, sorry. Um, but he, I mean, he's won a grade one, obviously. So he's, he's, ta- he's talented. Um, and Jimmy DeSaul and Il, Atlant- uh, Il Atlantic, uh, owned by former guys that I used to work with, so Ed Ware and um, Tony Bloom, um, they they would have loved those runs, both of them in the in the uh, at Cheltenham. But I just got a feeling that you know that Valley Burn was good, but I, I, you'd think that there's you know the C- Caldwell Potter or Brighter Days Ahead would they have finished closer to Valley Burn than 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 those two? Or I, Maybe I don't know, um, but I I just thought Brighter Days Ahead was was worth another chance. Formerly unbeaten, and I thought I thought there were reasons why she didn't run to her best. So 
I wanted to give her another chance. OK, well, I'll be with Bright Days Ahead as well. So it'll be two votes for Bright Days Ahead and two votes for Jimmy Desoy from Graham Robbie and Johnny Pearson there. Let's move on then to the handicap chase in the card. 230 is three mile, one furlongs here. A class one handicap chase where Krabilly broke a few hearts at Cheltenham at four to one currently viewing about the King of Rye Hope is nine to two. Forward plan, six to one. Twig is 13 to two. Cruise control, eight to one. Kilbe King is 10 to one. Sam Brown, sure to love the ground, is 12 to one and bigger about the rest. Any offers in this race here, Ed Nicholson? Yeah, we've got a, an extra place. It's a cracking race. It's a grade three, isn't it? Handicap chase. Um, it's always a good race, actually. I, I, I enjoy this event. Um, and you might need the extra place. Four or five to one, the field would probably be. Uh, so it's a difficult race. But having said that, I, I really fancy one here. Um, not just because of the horse, but because of the trainer. Um, cruise control. Tom Lacey targets this race. Uh, with his good horses, his good improving handicap chasers. He, uh, he won this back in 2018 with Thomas Patrick. He came second in the 2021 race with John, John BB uh, and 2022 came fourth with uh, T Clipper. Now, he doesn't have that many horses. He doesn't certainly have that many good horses. So the fact he pinpoints this race with his good horses suggests to me that he's, he's, he's had this race for a, a while in the back of the mind for cruise control, who is going up in distance up to three miles. Didn't stay at the Ida chase. Was it the Ida? I think it was. Didn't stay, but um, had previously been running over shorter. Runs on flat tracks, left-handed, Doncaster, Newcastle, now Aintree, probably suit. Uh, handicap mark, links in very well with his previous winners, uh, 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 Thomas Patrick was rated 139 and previously won off 131. Same sort of thing with cruise control. It was 130, now runs off 136. And the horse is a gorgeous horse. If you look back at his form on the racing post, he's, he's a lovely big horse who will, I think will be better at three miles than he was at two and a half. Um, I think they're targeted in this race. Um, and I, I make him a good bet at nine to one. I'd be surprised if he's out of the three. Um, and the extra place, even better if you can do it with Unibet. Um, so he'll be he'll be the he'll be the selection for me. Extra place available, and Ed Nicholson very sweet on cruise control around eight to one with Unibet currently for the two thirty at entry. Graham Robway for yourself in here, competitive handicap chase. Who do you like? Yeah, I, I like um, Denmat uh, for Venetia Williams. Heavy ground, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> Venetia Williams will, will most certainly have a winner this week. You'd have thought. Um, Heavy ground chase, absolutely ideal for her. Sneaks in at the bottom of the weights. I, I, I remember this horse winning at Ludlow because when he won, I put up a horse in the paper called Bally Beg, who was backed off the balls from about five to two into evens, I think. Um, five to two the day before into evens and, and, and finished last of the four, uh, only for Denmark to absolutely slam him. Then he ran over two miles at Newbury and he uh, definitely didn't have the pace for that. Then he went up to three miles last time out at the Cheltenham Festival in the Kim Muir. And he actually ran really, really well. I know he only finished ninth and he was beating a mile, but coming down the hill, he was banging contention. He was, he was leading for a, uh, a significant part of the race. And um, I just wonder if he ended up uh, going uh, off a uh, 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 too quick a pace. You know, that, that, those races, the, the Kim Muir and those amateur races, they often go uh, a, a right old gallop, don't they? And um, the winner, I know your way that you're thinking, came from a little bit off it. Um, I think Den Matten will be well suited by a sharp track like Aintree, given the way that he went round Cheltenham last time. He jumps well. We know he likes off ground and he's, he's a big old price. So, yeah, Venetia, heavy ground, chase, Den Matt wins. Okay, Den Matt, yeah. Look, this was around 16 to 1. We uni bet at the time of recording. A great each way bet of those extra places. Johnny Pearson, you've got anything for us in the handicap chase? Uh, yeah, obviously, you mentioned about Crevely breaking some hearts at Cheltenham. Mine was mine was very much one of them. I had some <laughs> nice anti post dockets going into that. And, uh, well, I was just, you know, one of those, one of those things. He, he, he ran well, and his jumping's still not as good as, it, as, good as you would like it to be, but it, it, is, it is improving. I think switching to the flat track such as Aintree is really going to going to help in that department. And I can see him running another very big race. You know, he's not been over three miles before, which is a slight unknown, especially you don't, don't necessarily want to be trying it for the first time in heavy ground. But I do think he's he's going to stay. And I think he probably got more in hand than the than the rest of these. I really think he's a future you know graded winner and should be able to win a race of this quality. 
Yeah, Carilli certainly got it in him as an EA. He's 4-1 to one at the top of the market. Might be a good favourite there in the 2 30 We move on to the final race we cover on this week's show, which is the 3.05. It's the JRL Group Liverpool Hurdle. It was a grade one over three miles. Where Flooring Porter tops the market. Unibet 3-1. to one. Cider Burley last year's winner is 9-2. Crambo 13-2. Hidden Valley Lake is 8-1. to one. Buddy won 17 to 2. Strong leader 9 to 1. Botox has another who should love the ground 10 to 1. Hewick, who expected him to be here at 12 to 1. And then bigger about the rest of them in here. Um, Ed Nicholson, Hewick, we thought he'd run in the National. We then thought he might run in the Entry Bowl. And then suddenly, he's here. Yeah, strange about that, isn't he? I mean, it's all ground related with Hewick, so I'm surprised they're running him at all. But um, he's an outsider, 16s. Has been nibbled at, um, but I can't have him on this ground myself. No. The interest is what the experts think. Um, but you can look at the top end of the market, and this race is uh, like these races have been for many years. They, they're centered around two older horses that have done it all before. There's very few younger horses in the staying brigade that are coming through, um, generally speaking. Maybe one or two came through at uh, Cheltenham. Um, but yeah, Florian Porter's come second and third in this in the last two years. He obviously won at Cheltenham. Uh, aside the Burleys won the last two um, of these uh, renewals. So they're the top end of the market. Um, they're 9 and 12, respectively. And you wouldn't be surprised. In fact, the market suggests that one of them will win. Um, I had a quick look at the Cheltenham rerun of the Stayers. And I was surprised, because I didn't remember at the time, how far Side the Burley was behind at the second last. He was 12 of 12, actually went through the hurdle. and must have been four lengths off the back of the main bunch. And yet he came with that trademark long run um, and got up for fifth. Like, you, you won't believe it if you look at it on the Racing Post site. He's too far back. I actually thought it was the other JP horse with the other colours who was nearer the leader at the time. Um, so I forgot all about that. And if he has come back, he's always been a spring horse, hasn't he? Um, he's got to go well on track we know he loves, on ground we know he likes. He is a 12-year-old. That is a worry. But he seems to be holding his form well. They haven't gone to the well too often this year, just twice. They've waited for him to, to tell them that he's ready. Um, so I just thought, out of the two, I'd rather be with Sider Burley. Um, I, su- I suppose those look, looking for horses to come and improve, they'd be looking at Cat Crambo. Hopefully that Cheltenham run was a, was just a one-off because he, he looked a progressive horse, didn't he, before that, but then really didn't run well at all. Um, so they'll be looking at Crambo maybe to be the young brigade's hope. But yeah, I reckon Sider Burley and Florian Porter will fight it out. And uh, Cider Burley would be my selection. Horses in this race, they tend to be higher rated. I think that eight of the last 11 winners of this, re- of this race have, what, have been 159 plus. There are only two horses that are on 159. Uh, and they're Florian Porter and Cider Burley. So, you know, the stats suggest that they, they, they'll be there or thereabouts. The form suggests, and previous course form suggests that it'll be there or thereabouts. So, yeah, Cider Burley for me. The lovable Cider Burley, Fred Nicholson. Then, uh, Graham Robway to you quickly on the, the Liverpool hurdle. Yeah, Crambo for me. Sam uh, clearly wasn't uh, clearly wasn't right at Cheltenham. Uh, I don't know what happened that day. I thought he was an absolute certainty, to be honest with you, uh, to win that third hurdle. He came home beating forty and a half lengths. He beat only uh, two. He beat only three horses home. Um, it just was not his true running, for one reason or another. He was nine pound below his best RPR. Um, maybe he raced too keenly off what was a steadyish kind of gallop. Um, hopefully they get a better uh, pace to go out here. Uh, I'm absolutely convinced that this Crambo is a top, top class stayer and he will go on to prove it um, in, in in the coming years. And hopefully um, we'll see the real Crambo turn up this time in the Liverpool hurdle and not the Crambo that turned up last time at Cheltenham. Hmm. Staying in the house of you during the Cheltenham Festival, I can tell you now we heard the word Crambo too many times within that house during that week. Uh, Johnny Pearson, final selection from you in the Liverpool hurdle. Uh, I feel like I'm probably not going to be having a bad. I mean, strong leader, I can see improving for Ollie Murphy. hasn't run since two you know, OK runs in January at Cheltenham and possibly being kept off the track with this in mind. I can see him improving. You know, the two at the top of the market, you know, they've got arguably best form. But one that's interesting is Monkfish, who obviously was an absolute potential superstar then had all sorts of problems one well over hurdles at Gowran Park on very testy ground for all it wasn't the strongest pace that day in January but you know the concern would be that that he bled in the gold cup and you know that could happen again he could 
could end up being pulled up again. So I wouldn't want to have a bad name, but I could see him running a good race, provided you know he doesn't have any issues in it. Absolutely. I think he was on my list as well, Monkfish. Just think back over hurdles. Could be absolutely anything and has been well supported in the market as well. So there we go. That's the preview of the races at Aintree on Saturday. We'll be back shortly after this with any other selections and our naps for Grand National Day. I want betting on the horses to be anything but flat. With an app that impresses every time out. You're on. Want to watch live streaming of races in the UK, Ireland and around the globe? You get a chance to win even bigger with three uni boosts every day on any horses you want. Unibet, you're on. Welcome back to the final part of the Racing Postcast then brought to you by the Race Post sponsored by Unibet. You've still got Sam Hart, Johnny Pearson, Graham Robway and Unibet's Ed Nicholson here taking you through the weekend racing and it's that time of the video again in the, the podcast where we discuss any other selections and this is often a popular part of the uh, the show because there's plenty of winners that come out of it. Johnny Pearson, I will. I like bigging people up on this show, but the comments absolutely love you during this section of the show. Anytime you've been on, you seem to put up plenty of winners. And even Robbie Wilder's mentioned to me that he's seen plenty of comments about you having some love about the other selection you put up. You can give a couple for Friday, but you've got anything else for the weekend? Uh, yeah, I've got one for Friday and one for Saturday. I'll stick with Saturday while I've been going through it, and that'll be in the five o'clock, the, the novice chase. And one that's very interesting. It was obviously trained by Willie Mullins. Uh, it's called Hercule, Hercule de Soy. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's not been seen through the winter. He was looking like one of the best two-mile novice chasers that was going to be here this season. But for whatever reason, they didn't want to run him really testing ground through the winter, which, given how conditions are like to be, is a bit of a concern. But I think he could. he's still got that sort of potential of could be anything. You know, He's won his last five races all in fairly decent fashion. And if he turns up in in good form, I think he could run a run a huge race and be better than the, the than the rest of them in that. And one for Friday comes in the Sefton Novices Hurdle four forty. I'm gonna I'm not sure what went wrong at Cheltenham, but I'm gonna stick with reading Tommy wrong here. Big fan of the horse. I think he could be very very good still. And I think he looks a real chaser in the making. Whatever happened at Cheltenham, I'm willing to put a line through. And I think he probably is much, much the best in here. Definitely has the most potential from from my point of view. Yeah, no, I think with regards to reading Tommy wrong and you saying, you know, you're going to stick with him, I feel like you should because you put this horse up as a horse to follow at the start of the season um, and then went and won at 16-1 to 1 in the Lords of Nace. So full credit to yourself mm. there. Um, I'm going to go to Graham Robway here. Any other selections for you, Robway? I thought reading Tommy Wrong would win as well um, on Friday. Uh, there's a couple other that I like on on Friday too. Um, in the two twenty, there's a big uh, handicap hurdle, and we all know how good uh, Dan Skelton is at, um, at winning these types of races. Uh, he's got five in this race, and Harry Skelton's chosen the ride Katira who um, has got some really good course and distance form because he was beaten, she was beaten, sorry, um, only three and a half lengths behind Irish Point, who went on to win, uh, to, to win um, that race at Leopardstown over Christmas and then finished second in the champion hurdle. That was over course and distance in grade one company at this meeting last season when she had horses like Hermes Allen, You Wear It Well, Springwell Bay, Crambo, all, all subsequent winners, some of them grade one winners in behind, you know, and she is going to be absolutely thrown in. I think she's racing off a mark of 134 um, and she was given a nice winter break uh, in order to prep for this. Uh, she's favourite, but I could see her going off really, really short here, Katira, because if she reproduces that great one form, uh, she should uh, win that race. And the other one I'm going to throw in, a ridiculous price, and you might laugh at this, right? But I've just got a feeling that Manila Drama is going to run well in a million chase at a massive price. I think it's 50, 66 to 1 in a five runner race um, on Friday. Right, but he is lightly raced over this sort of trip. Donald McCain targets this meeting, and last time out he was beaten by Thunder Rock, who I think could run a big race on. Uh, he's running on Thursday. Mm. Um, I think that race at Kelso might have been underestimated. So 
I could see Manila Drama certainly running into a place in the five runner race in the Melling Chase. That's the three thirty at Aintree on Friday, Sam. There you go. Yeah, two twenty then Katira for Graham Robway, and then in that Melling Chase, you got lots of John Bond Protector at Pick Dory. But it's going to be Manila Drama, a massive price for Graham Robway. And Ed Nicholson, anything else that you wanted to mention before we get the naps? No, nothing for me. Nothing for you. Then that's it. Then it's time to get the best bets for Grand National Day. These will all be boosted by Unibet once this podcast is uploaded. So you can get access to these boosts on all of the naps. And I'll kick things off this week. I'm going to put up one for the Grand National itself. And it's popular with myself and Johnny Pearson. But I am Maximus will be the one that I'll put up as my nap. Like I say, absolutely loves the heavy conditions. That run against Vanilla last time out did that in easy style. We know he stays from what he did in the Irish Grand National. So Iron Maximus, for me, will be my best bet. Graham Robway, to you next. Your nap will be? My, mine's in the first um, entry on, on Saturday, the 120. Uh, Johnny Who for me, Sam. Johnny Who for Graham Robway. And then Ed Nicholson, to you? Yeah, mine's in the 2.30. Cruise Control. Ran a personal best last time at uh, Newcastle. Uh, he, he loves the heavy going. Trainer does really well in the race. Has won it in previous years and finished second a couple of years ago. And Cruise Control looks like a typically improving staying chaser for Tom Lacey. So around about 9-1, to one, Cruise Control. Cruise Control for Ed Nixon and Johnny Pearson. Finish the naps off. Oh, yeah, with Jimmy Desoy in the 155. I think he'd you know, run behind Ballyburn last time. I think it was pretty good and he should be capable of winning here. There we go. There are your naps then. They're on the screen now. Like I say, these will be boosted by Unibet once this video and audio show is uploaded. So that is it for this week's show. What a, a hell of a show that was. Um, just quickly, I'll go around for 30 seconds each. Where are we watching the Grand National? I'm actually going to be stuck on a train and watching it on my phone, <laughs> um, which isn't ideal. Ed, Nick, was you say you'll be down in Chepstow? We'll be watching it at Chepstow. There's an hour and five minute gap between one race and the other, so we can all watch it together. And hopefully from the Welsh crowd, Christian Williams will have a winner, but um, with Kitty's Light. But it'd be a great atmosphere, really well. Hell of a noise at Chepstow if Kitty's Light was going to do it. Graham Robway, where are you this weekend? Any, any grand national parties? Do you do those? I have, I have done it in the past, Sam, that's for sure. Um, I'm, I'm toying with the idea of going to local point, point to point, actually. Um, uh, it just depends whether it's, it's finished before four o'clock so I can get home in time. But I'm very much looking forward to uh, the weekend. It's been a busy old week, Sam, but we love it, don't we? We love these big meetings. Uh, the, the, the more racing, the better. Absolutely. Yeah, the Cheltenham Festival finishes and this comes around uh, as quick as anything. Um, and Johnny Pearson, where will you be this weekend? I'll just, I'll just be at home keeping it ni- nice and chilled. Make a nice beef ragu or something. On a, on a beef ragu. Any, anything will be better than sitting on a train, let me tell you that. I've, I've really badly timed that back from London, but it is what it is. Um, so there we go. Big thanks, as always, to Ed Nicholson, Graham Robway, and Johnny Pearson for this week's show. We'll be back next week. We're then building in to the flat season. We'll be really getting stuck into some of the big flat uh, names soon, so looking forward to that. As always, do like, comment, share, and subscribe, and do gamble responsibly. Best of luck for the Grand National.